Hey guys, welcome back to another Planet Mithril Paints, and today we're continuing our painting guides for the Fellowship with Gimli, Son of Gloin, an absolute powerhouse unit on the battlefield, ready to throw himself into any scenario he finds himself in, and let's not forget Lord of the Beards as well. So without further ado, please sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. Start by base coating Gimli's face within the helm with Bugman's Glow. Layer over with a mix of Cadian Flesh Tone and Bugman's Glow. Once the wash is dried, layer over again with the previous mix leaving the right and flesh shade showing in the recesses. Now apply a highlight with Cadian Flesh Tone. Keep a good point to your brush here to stay accurate as the surface area is really quite small and tucked away. Highlight again now with a mix of Kislev Flesh and Cadian Flesh Tone. The Kislev gives a more muted, warm, dwarvish look to the skin to that of his elvish counterpart Legolas. Finally, apply a pinpoint dot highlight of pure Kislev Flesh. You can then pick out the eyes with Abaddon Black and Pallid Witch Flesh. Gimli has a huge, rich, bushy beard, which is the envy of, I'm sure, a lot of people, myself included. To represent the subtle ginger red tones that shine through, we're going to be using some different hued browns which will subtly let the undertones of his facial hair shine through, whilst maintaining a natural look to the overall beard. To start off, base coat his beard, any braids and the braid down his back with a mix of Doom Ball Brown and Rhinox Hide. Now we're going to add some scrag brown to the mix for the first all over layer. The slight orangey pigment to scrag will blend nicely with the rich undertones of the Doom Ball and the Rhinox and help give the facial hair that characteristic dwarvish look of Gimli from the films. Once the wash is dried, re-layer over with the previous mix leaving the wash showing in the recesses. Now you want to start separating out the larger areas of hair and creating definition between the various areas of hair including the moustache, bulk of the beard, braids and ponytail down his back. Add more scrag brown to the mix for the first highlight stage. Now we want to create further definition across all the hair by defining individual strands of beard hair down his front. Gimli's beard is extremely long, lucky, so keep your paint application here in long unbroken lines. This will avoid the beard having an almost scraggy look once finished. Take your time here as these guidelines will map out where our future highlights will be applied. The neater you can be at this stage, the better the overall beard will look once we finished. Add more scrag brown to the mix for the next highlight stage. 
make sure we're adding this in gradual increments as we want to avoid the overall beard becoming luminous orange and unnatural looking. Apply this in finer lines down the length of all the hair to further define the guidelines we put in place from the previous layering stage. Now we want to lift the tone and tie in the orange and brown hues we've been building up till now. Apply a highlight by adding in Tuscal Fur to the previous mix. Start to focus this on the most prominent areas of hair to create a sense of natural flow and depth. Keep a fine tip and not overloading your brush here will be key in getting these highlights in the places you want them. Finally, we're going to apply an extreme edge highlight and a dot highlight to all the hair with a mix of tusk gore fur and pallid witch flesh. Focus this now on the absolute upper and outer areas of hair, as well as the tips of the braids and the ends of the hair. Now we're going to move on to the most prominent feature of Gimli, the rich, deep, red tunic he sports throughout the films. We want to pay homage to the red look of the material without it becoming overly garish and too red. To achieve this, as with the beard, we'll be turning the hues down to a more natural, travelled look by adding in complementing browns and avoiding vibrant, pigmented hues whilst highlighting. To start off with, base coat the entire tunic, glove fingers, trouser legs with a mix of Mephiston Red and Rhinox Hide. The Rhinox tones down the Mephiston nicely and creates a rich, almost burgundy look to the base coat, which is perfect for the look we're striving for. It's important that we try and create some uniformity between the beard and the tunic to tie in these large areas of red and orange tones, but we also want to subtly differentiate them enough so that they don't blend in with each other on the tabletop. To achieve this, add some scrag brown to the previous Mephiston Rhinox mix and apply an all layer over layer to the tunic.
Once the wash is dried, re-layer over with the previous mix. With this layer, start blocking out the large areas of material, leaving the Carabao Crimson showing in the recesses to provide shading and depth to the inner recessed areas of fabric. At this point, you can also separate the individual fingers gripping his trusty axe. The Carabao will help accentuate the richness of the red that we want to help it stand apart from the facial hair. Add more scrap brown to the mix of the first highlight stage and continue to push the definition between the outer and inner areas of material by focusing more on the outer folds as well as the edges of the weaving going down Gimli's back. For the next highlight stage, start adding in Deathclaw Brown to the combined Rhinox and Fiston Scrag mixture. Concentrate now on defining the look of Gimli's tunic by focusing on the upper folds of material. The Deathclaw now lifts the overall pigmentation of the mix, accentuating the hues of the vibrancy of the Mephiston and complementing the richness of both the Scrag and the Rhinox to give a very natural transition between the darker and lighter areas of material. There are some areas of the tunic that are rather flat, just like the lower half of Legless's tunic, so creating natural definition here can be tricky. Take your time and examine exactly where you want to apply these in order to get the application you're happy with.
Finally, your highlight should be applied with a mix that contains no more than 50% the original mix and 75% Deathclaw Brown. This will avoid the mixture edging into an overly orange territory. Apply this in an extreme edge highlights on the absolute outer areas of material where the light will be hitting more prominently as well as down the knuckle joints to create definition across the fingers. What's a dwarf without his trusty axe, map or axes? Gimli is a model that has an awful lot of red and brown tones to him, so it's crucial we create differentiation between these areas. We're going to be base coating all the axe shafts with a mix of Wasdaka red and Rhinox hide. There are three in total across the model, the double-headed one in his hands and two hanging down one either side of him. Finally, apply an edge highlight down the edges of all the axe shafts with pure Wasdaka red. Base coat Gimli's boots, belts and leathers with Rhinox hide. Note here, there's a small section above the bedroll on Gimli's back which we mistakenly started painting gold later on down the line. This should also be painted with the Rhinox here at this stage and follow the same painting process as the rest of the leathers. Apply a layer with a mix of Rhinox Hide and Gawthor Brown. Once the wash is dried, apply a layer with a mix of Rhinox Hide and Gawthor Brown. Apply an edge highlight across the boots, edges of the belts and straps and the other leather sections with pure Gawthor Brown. 
This helps give the leathers a more worn, age look in comparison to the richer browns we could use for these stages. Carefully pick out the inner of the helmet with a mix of Doom Ball Brown and Abaddon Black. Layer over by adding Deathclaw Brown to the mix. Add more Deathclaw Brown and mark out a concentric circle pattern going down across the helmet interior. Finally, highlight this pattern with pure Deathclaw Brown. Paint all of Gimli's chainmail, the axe blades and the outer workings of the helmet with lead belcher. Once the null oil is dried, apply an edge highlight to all these areas with Iron Breaker. With the back of the helmet, apply a dot highlight on the edges of the plating to give an authentic look to the scale mail. Once this is done, carefully trace a thin line with Abaddon Black along the inner headband of the helmet, leaving the Iron Breaker showing on the edges either side. We'll be painting this gold in a mo. Now we're going to move on to the gold armour which is characteristic of the dwarven race in Middle Earth. Base coat of the inner axe fixture, the beard braids, inner area of the headband and the emblem on the front and the upper arm armour with Balthazar gold. This is a very rich, vibrant gold which will contrast nicely with the more muted tones we use currently. 
They're dwarves after all. They do love their gold. Now apply a layer across all these areas with hash out copper to further accentuate the richness of the metals. Once both washes have dried, etch highlight all the gold with Sycorax bronze. This will help lift the upper areas to best show where the light is hitting off Gimli's gold plating. With the upper arm armour, you can start to draw a slight pattern along the flat side to represent the segmented plating he sports up there. This however is purely optional and you can get away with just a simple edge highlight instead. Finally, apply a pinpoint highlight with a mix of cigarette bronze and pallid witch flesh just to the sharpest corners and absolute upper edges of the plating. You can paint the bulk of the axe head now with Castellax Bronze. Apply an edge highlight with Sycorax Bronze just to accentuate where the light will be hitting.
paint the bedroll with Dark Reaper. Layer over with Thunderhawk Blue. Finally, Edge Highlight with Fenrisian Grey. There we have it, Gimli son of Gloin, ready to accompany the Fellowship on their quest and do his part to help save the future of the free peoples of Middle-earth.